So hello online folks. Um, you definitely don't want to see me tonight. It's been a really long day, but I want to share these slides that I'm going to use in my class tomorrow uh, with the students that are going to be doing uh, this same essay um, a little bit behind you. Um, and I hope I know that you it's due in two days, but I hope that it helps. Um, I guess the first thing I should warn you about is that my conception of an essay might be heresy to some of my colleagues. Um, but I'm going to share it anyway. So anyway, here we go. Uh, what is an essay? Well, um, you probably think it's an instrument of torture for students, and it has been from what the beginning of time. But we actually have a place that we can go back to and look at um, someone to blame for this particular instrument of torture. And this is the guy. He's a French nobleman um, at the end of the 16th century. He um, kind of was a lawyer for a while, and then he uh, kind of went out of public service um, and sort of retired up to a little loft where he read lots of stuff and wrote lots of stuff, and he wrote essays. Um, so Michel de Montaigne is the guy. And the word essay, as I mean, he kind of coined it, and he worked on this for about 20 years. He published it several times. It's from the kind of old French word that means to test or to try. It's not, um, well, I'll say it in a minute, but um, his particular essays are just weird in all kinds of ways. Um, they're really honest though. They're really um, introspective in a lot of ways that were not the way that people wrote back in those days. Um, and I guess the big thing I wanna point out to you here, this kind of list of different things is that it's full of questions and not necessarily answers, especially pat answers. Um, so uh, I'm one of the people I was reading tonight when I was going through this is a guy named Joshua Landy, who just says they're a mess. And uh, you would probably agree if you tried to get through any of it. Um, someone else, I'm going to read this because I really, really like it. He says, essay comes direct from the French essai which is the noun form of the word essayer, meaning to try. Uh, pardon my French because I'm not good at it. Um, so an essay is a try or a trial or attempt to marshal your thoughts on a particular topic to see if they make sense and hang together. Thus Montaigne's essays are the opposite of what most written texts up to his time had been, namely dogmatic and didactic, meaning the dogmatic, you, this whoever's writing, they know exactly what the truth is, and man, they're going to ram it down your throat. And didactic, um, they're going to do it by teaching you. You know, that's what that word means to. So instead, instead, there are tentative explorations of what he knows or can find out on a particular topic. They are experiments in knowing. And this by a um, blogger named Simon. And um, so some of the things that he wrote, just to give you an idea um, of what he was doing for that 20 years, um, here's some titles of idleness, um, of cannibals, um, of smells, of thumbs, just lots of weird stuff here. Lots of really profound, interesting stuff too. Um, probably the most famous of his essays, um, and I can't tell you tons about it because it's been a while since I've read it, but um, it was his essay on friendship. And he was good friends with another, you know, man of about his age. Um, they were both, you know, lawyers starting out and magistrates starting out in, you know, the the town, the area around them. Um, Etienne de la Boissie, Boissie, I think is how you pronounce it. Anyway, he died. So Montaigne's friend died. Um, they were both, both kind of in their early 30s, I guess. Um, he, his friend Etienne uh, left a child um, and, you know, I mean, a young child. And Montaigne used that particular essay to reflect on friendship, but some of it had to do, I think the sort of um, impetus for it was he's trying to figure out kind of why he was still here and his friend wasn't. And, you know, what friendship means and all of that. And so um, that is one of his famous essays. Um, it's, I don't, maybe you have, you know, dogmatic and didactic, um, you know, exactly what happens after death and all of that. Um, but Montaigne didn't, and a lot of people don't, um, going on here, um, someone else that was, um, 
I, I thought I'll, I'll read this too. It, what makes him worth reading, despite his endless illusions and ability, inability to stay on topic, is the quality of his thinking. In every one of his essays, he tries to make sense of not just himself, but of all of us human beings, our minds and our quirks and our faults and our inconsistencies. And he realizes that the best way to make sense of us is to realize that we don't really make sense. Truly, a man is marvelously vain, diverse, and is a uh, truly man is a marvelously vain, diverse, and undulating object, he notes in that first essay. It is hard to find any constant and uniform judgment on him. And that's from uh, another author that I was reading about, um, Blake Nixon. Anyway, so, um, so how do we get to the essays that you know? And, you know, you can think of all the different ways that you've been taught to write essays. You've been taught to write timed essays that are very um, shallow. They, I mean, you can't write anything profound in 20 minutes. Um, so how we got here, I've got a lot of things. I will not bore you with it. But what I'd like to give you as final thoughts for what you're doing here with the definition essay is just to let go of as much as you can the five paragraph essay high school conditioning. Um, structure and clarity are awesome. But if all you do is stay so structured and safe within you know, the boundaries of what you absolutely know and nobody can shoot you down, um, it's not just boring, it's not really effective, and it's not going to serve you well as you go out into, um, you know, more advanced college writing. Um, it's definitely okay to be wrong. Um, and actually, if, you know, if you're going to be wrong, I mean, I'm a, I'm a choir person and a singer. If you're going to be wrong, you know, it's do it loudly so that you have a chance to learn what the right thing is. Um, and with a lot of things that you're going to be working on as you go further into your, you know, college career and beyond is there aren't any right answers. There are a lot of shades of different, you know, lesser or greater evils sometimes. Um, but think of failure as a learning opportunity because it is the only way you do learn. If you get everything right all the time, you're not learning. You're not um and so for some of you, maybe this first essay that you um, or the, the thing that you turned in and I just turned back the grades today, maybe that was, um, you know, the worst grade you've ever gotten in your whole life. But it's 40 points out of a thousand. You have plenty of opportunity to, you know, make that up. And you didn't most of you didn't do anything particularly wrong. It's just you're still kind of hobbled by that five paragraph essay conditioning that you've been taught forever. Um, anyway, that's what I have for you. I'll show you my works cited or consulted here in case you care. Um, and I hope this is helpful. And I'll look forward to seeing your essays on Friday. Thanks.